Shalom friends from all over the world. Chaim the Galilean here, Sea of Galilee as usual behind me. Let me tell you about these fall feasts. They are a busy time. Uh, not a moment to breathe, but let me tell you what, they are the unfolding of prophecy. They are, they are God's prophetic plan. These fall feasts, whether it's the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Tabernacles, you hear the shofar in the Feast of Trumpets, you hear that silver oh, trumpet blast, you hear the shofar blow, you think of Mount Sinai, you think of crowning a king, you think of rallying in the valley. I just love it, I love it. And the Day of Atonement, thank you for joining us every year. That's a 24 and a half hour fast and prayer and, and intercession time. It's so great. I just thank you for that. I mean, and then blowing the shofar on the Day of Atonement, signaling the end of the Shemitah, maybe the beginning of the Jubilee, but it's the preparing for the great redemption, right? And knowing our names are written in the Book of Life, I think these are so meaningful. They're practicing their dress rehearsals for the future. And then you got the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the judge, the, the time of the dwelling, the tabernacling here in the land. And the nation's got to come here. What a season. Let me tell you what, it's busy, but I love it. The fact that people, you know, are supposed to always have extra food in their tabernacle to welcome in like guests. They're like, you might welcome in King David. You might welcome in Abraham, Enoch, uh, Gideon, you know, and, and I'm like, wait a second, newsflash. Those guys are dead. You're not going to welcome them in. They're dead. They've been dead for a long time. But then I realized there's going to be a, re a resurrection soon. And there's going to be a thousand year reign, okay? And we very well may welcome in guests like that, that are resurrected. And we're practicing right now dress rehearsal for the future. And those nations who don't come, remember, they won't get rain. But it's been a very busy season. Uh, filled with visit visitors, guests, people coming from, you know, up north of us, uh, Europe, right? Coming in from all over, uh, people from African nations, all over, um, from Eastern nations. And it's just beautiful to see from the Americas, you know, up in Canada, United States, down in South America. We're overflowing. Uh, people are sleeping in the tabernacle. Uh, but it's great to have volunteers who are lending a hand, you know. We've had this season, it's been hard. Haven't had many people, but we get to show these visitors around, these guests uh, who are coming from prayer initiatives of their own to join with Vertical Galley House of Prayer. People that are coming from organizations, synagogues, churches uh, from all over the world. And they, they join in, they plug right in uh, and lend a hand. It, it makes me smile. Thank you guys for coming here and, and being... Mark your calendars for January. We are going to be having the Ambassador Academy again that discipleship training school, you know, here along the Jordan River. But thank you for the shifts that you do, the serious people who do from 8 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m., and then all the way to 8 a.m., then all the way to 8 p.m. They just, it's 24-7. It's, I mean, these, the, it's not 24-7, but it's, it's, it's day and night prayer. And, uh, and I just thank you for that seriousness you take for the Tabernacle of David, those who joined with us and continue to plan to be with us. Uh, the work continues throughout the Tabernacle season. I mean, with the, the lone soldiers, we're housing them, taking care of them in our multi-residence housing along the Sea of Galilee. It's right there, you know. And, of course, the Hebrew school continues. The clothing distribution continues. Job training at night, it continues. I came in with a group that was checking out what we're doing. And I go in late and one of, our, one of our Hebrew teachers was there teaching into the evening. The job training is at night, uh, not on Shabbat, but it's just beautiful. And God's kingdom is advancing thanks to your generosity, thanks to your help. They feel, people feel the love in this hard time. War in Ukraine. People feel the love and, hey, if we feel tired, you know what we do? We fall back and let the glory of God carry us because we have only enough, only a certain amount of strength, but we just lean into the glory, lean into the mystery of the prophecies being fulfilled and smile. And I love those excursions we get to do together. You just can't beat tabernacles in Jerusalem. Woo! Except at the Alley Return Center. Um, <laughs> you'll get to do some of this stuff with us. But we were uh, invited to a place that is not open to the public. It's called the Milk. Kizidek High Place, you know where Melchizedek, it's the time of Abraham, uh, and it could very well be the very spot that Melchizedek offered, uh, uh, you know, sacrifices to the Lord, this before there ever was a, you know, a temple at all, and, uh, and so we were able to walk up the pilgrim's path all the way up, 
And this guy, famous, world famous archaeologist, Eli Shukran, what a guy. He literally flew in from Saudi Arabia from Mount Sinai, where he's doing a dig, to give us a private professional overview of his findings of the path of ascent of the pilgrims, where they would ascend and do the water libation to the Temple Mount on tabernacles, and the nations would join in. And it was just, there's such a fervor in the air because of the red heifers, such a fervor uh, for the third temple to be built, and it will be built. And uh, that's something to help with. Um, we're not going to defile it, but we can help prepare a dwelling place in the land. I mean, Ezekiel promised it would be built. And, um, but let me tell you what, when we were the first to walk up this pilgrim's path and to sing the songs of ascent, I was able to play the guitar. Others played in other languages and sang. And, and the fervor, it was such a joy. Tabernacles is about joy. And, and it was just wonderful. And, and, I, and it proves that the Temple Mount is not in the city of David. It's up on the Temple Mount because the Pilgrim's Path goes from the Pool of Siloam and goes all the way up to the Temple Mount. And, uh, you know, the Galilee, man, living in the Galilee, let me tell you, it's a holy place. The Alia work, it's a holy work. I want you, as you join with us, I want you to just roar with the Lion of Judah as he roars because the redemption is nigh at hand. You know, we're tabernacling and preparing to tabernacle together for a thousand years with fullness of joy because our names are written in the Book of Life. We're a community that respects Leviticus 23. The lion of the tribe of Judah, and so I'm gonna count to three, and however you wanna release that, just do it. So ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you for making plans on your calendar to be with us. You know, in the Ambassador Academy, there's nothing quite like it. The Bible truly comes to alive next year, Ambassador Academy. That's a discipleship training. And uh, please come and have a life-changing experience with us. And thank you for joining with us, those who are helping and those who are sowing in to the work of the kingdom. God bless you from the Galilee. The Aliyah Return Center was founded to help the sons and daughters of Abraham in making their Aliyah, their return to the promised land, while at the same time educating nations from across the globe to the biblical significance of supporting Aliyah and being trained as ambassadors for Israel, practically applying the prophetic scriptures. Throughout the years as a charity, we've been able to help thousands of immigrants return and be integrated into this land by providing them complimentary lodging and a whole lot more. To find out more and to participate, go to AliyahReturnCenter.com today.